after lots of doodles and sketches, I came up with this design, which um, we see Mary looking directly at us, holding up uh, the Christ child. And, and the idea really is that she presents to us the, um, the, the Christ child and Jesus' arms are raised in a sort of um, a joyous celebration of life. And, uh, and, but it's also the, the, the crucified Christ as well as the risen Christ. So I'll cut into his hands and side the, the wounds of the crucifixion. Now, the, the idea, because it was almost two metres tall, um, actually it's more than that, I think it's 2.25 metres tall, um, it couldn't be done in one set of piece of stone because the stone, when it's outside, it has to be ideally um, carved on the stone as it's been laid in the earth, so on its bed, they call it. Um, but it had to be cut in sections. Um, which isn't a problem, so the sections would be mortared together. So I had to work out um, the size of the blocks. So having drawn it up full size and taken the drawing to wantage and trying it out to make sure it was the right height, then had to calculate <coughs> the size of the blocks of stone. So here we see in green the blocks of stone. The other thing that's quite complex, even though it's an incredibly simple design, um, it, it's, it's, it, the, the figures are twisted. So it, to help me on more complex sculptures, I, I make a, a maquette, or a, a small model, which I did in clay. So in a sense, this is, you could call it the front, because this is where Christ looks directly at us, Mary looks directly at us. But you can see the body is slightly twisted. She's turning uh, towards us, so her body is actually slightly twisted. So it's absolutely key that the sculpture works from every angle because it'll be seen from every angle. The beauty of stone is that you can, you can, you can hint at things um, and uh, in a way that it, some other mediums you can't. You know, the, 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 the folded um, the sleeves are just this sort of carved section that'll be, it'll be enough to make it read as uh, the sleeves rolled up. And it always amazes me that with, with carving, that when you carve a face, that um, the slightest change of angle of the chisel uh, makes a completely different emotion. And one of the joys of, of, of where it's going is that it will greet uh, visitors as they approach the, the convent, the entrance of the convent. It sort of greets them before they get there. Um, it's the community definitely coming out to meet them. Um, but I think what's lovely about stone in natural light is it obviously changes throughout the day. And as, as the sun moves, then the shadows, you know, obviously change, and it reads differently. So there's times when it's very subtle, and other times when it's quite quite stark, when when the shadows are really strong. Um, and I think that's one of the joys of it is it, it's sort of it's a living piece. It's not it's not static. English limestone from the Hartham Park Quarry near Bath and it's really beautiful quality. Each piece will take a couple of months to do, each section. And even though it appears to be monotonous work, you can't switch off at any point. That's when you make mistakes. And what's so extraordinary, an amazing coincidence, that the, the two or three chisels that I'm using, um, after I'd started carving, I realised that they are actually uh, chisels that had been given to me from, uh, by uh, Sister Bridget um, from, um, from the convent. So, how perfect I'm actually using her old tools to carve a piece that's going to go outside the convent. And I suppose most days I'll work from uh, this time of year, which is January, um, till about 3.30, 4 o'clock, and then the light's gone. And by then I'm absolutely physically exhausted. That's one of the things I like about it. It's not easy. Um, it's, there's no quick way. If you use power tools, uh, which I do a little bit to, to take off just sections, but you easily make a mistake and there's no going back. And one of the joys of carving stone is that um, unlike casting, whether it's bronze or glass or anything, where you 
you model first so you can put pieces on and take them away and put more on again and then cast. With stone there's no going back. It's absolutely direct. A surgeon friend of mine says, you think twice and cut once. Which is very true. If you take off too much stone, you've had it. You can't put it back again. So it's a constant check-in lines and measurements um, and then slowly working away to the lines that you want. So rather than just going straight to the, to the depth, I always leave a little bit of leeway just so that I can then move it around. And actually also to allow you to change your mind when you're carving. So this piece, you see on the bottom section, the, the base of it will roughly be that sort of shape but I'm not quite sure what's going to look best. It may be that I'll move that up. So one has to allow enough stone to, to change your mind. And one of the extraordinary things about the material is that although it's rock hard, it's incredibly sensitive as well. And it always amazes me how you can, you can get the most extraordinary sort of emotion in the material just by changing the angle of the, the chisel on a, when you're carving a face. But the bulk of the work is this, is cutting away the stone to reveal the, the, the figure within it. Um, and it's a, it's a huge amount of work. Each of these pieces is uh, is an, is an hour or so of chipping. <laughs> completely all-consuming. It um, takes over my life completely. And often I'll be thinking about a particular relationship of, you know, a space or something. In the middle of the night I'll wake up thinking about it. So it is completely um, um, overwhelming, really. But that's part of the joy of it. I work on the basis that God sees everything, so it, um, it has to be as right as I can make it, or at least the best that I can do. I've blocked out the, the base section, um, uh, Our Lady's legs, and, um, and, and I, I can't really do any more on that at the moment, so I, I'm, I'm leaving that there until I've blocked out the central section. And then when I've roughly got the shape of that, um, I'll lift that onto the base section. It'll be pegged, the huge stainless peg, so that then I can work on the two together. And then when I've basically blocked all those out, and I'm, uh, they're just about there, then I'll fit the top piece, and then I'll work on the whole thing as a whole. And then when it's finished, it'll be dismantled and taken, taken to wantage. It's very solitary, although having said that, um, when I'm carving outside, I tend to um, end up having interesting conversations with, with, with the dustmen or the delivery men who, who constantly want to see what I've done since they were last here. And, um, and you end up having some really interesting conversations. So it's not entirely solitary. But I suppose in a, in a sense, I, I've always thought that what I do is a little bit like um, being a priest. That, that it is quite, um, in some ways, solitary, but it's also social. And, and actually, people share with you things that you're always rather surprised that they will share with you, which is, which is rather lovely. Inspiration comes from everyday living. Some of it comes from reading the Bible, but, it, but I'm not an illustrator of the Bible, so I don't take a verse and illustrate it. I, I respond um, to, to things in the Bible. But I see um, what I read in the Bible in everyday life. So, it, you know, we live the Bible. What happened um, to Christ, what happens in the Bible, happens to us in every day. And in a sense, that's what I want people to see in my work, is that, that it, it reflects them. You know, this is, this is the virgin and child, but it's also any mother and child, um, or any person and child, and the same um, the same hopes and worries and fears and loves that they shared are shared by every woman and child. And it's that that I want people to, to see in, in the work.
And most of all, I think, that I want people to pick up in the work is a sense of hope. Because without hope, there is nothing. And it's that that I want to shine through all the work. I find it easier to know when to stop with stone than I do with paint. Um, painting, I think it's because it's easier to add with painting. You, you, you can take away, but you generally add. With stone, because you are literally just taking away, there's always a, an awareness that you might take away too much. It's always a very strange experience letting something go. It's like um, sending your child off to school for the first time or, or them leaving home. Um, and in a sense, it's, it's, it's not yours anymore. But I've, over the years, I've come to realise that for me, it's the process that I really like. And much as I like to go and see something installed, um, I, it's the process of making it that is, is so important to me. And, it, and I suppose it's, for me, it's like, a, it, it's like prayer. It's, it's, you know, the answer isn't always what you're expecting. Um, and, and, but but it's, a sort of, it's a sort of act of devotion, if you like. And, and I like the fact that it is almost self-indulgent that in a case like this, it goes on for months and months and months. And when it's finally installed, there is a, almost a sort of anti-climax that it's, that it's over. And I often find myself slowing down at the end of a, towards the end of a, a commission as I'm working on it. Um, and I'm not sure if it's a conscious slowing down of working or whether it's just becoming more and more careful and just the finishing touches but you definitely slow down as you, it's almost like you don't want to let it go.